Hello and welcome to module 9 where we are going to discuss linear correlation and goodness of fit test. First stop is going to be linear correlation. <clears throat> so bivariate data is data which contains two variables. Typically you have an x variable and then you have a y variable. And then our goal in this module is to look at the relationship between these two variables. One way to look at the relationship between these two variables is to look at a or create a scatter plot, and it's a graphical representation where the values of the two variables are plotted along two axes. And then the scatter plot can be used to identify correlation. For instance, if you want to look at in my visual here on the screen, you have someone's height in meters, and then on the y axis, you have their weight in kilograms. And notice I plotted everyone's height and weight so every point represents the height and weight of one person and look at this nice pretty trend here as height increases weight increases and not only that but notice it's almost a nice neat line that's what we mean by correlation specifically linear correlation which is our focus so a correlation exists between two variables when the value of one is somehow associated with the value of the other one thing you want to keep in mind though is just because you have correlation it does not imply a cause and effect relationship. It could appear that there's a relationship between two things but maybe that relationship is because of a third item or a third variable that we did not consider. So correlation does not always imply causation. A linear correlation exists between two variables when there is a correlation and the scatter plot results in a pattern that can be approximated by a straight line. So here I have displayed some scatter plots of data. I have the correlation coefficient r. I have r equals negative 1. Notice that is literally a near perfect negatively sloped line. That's how my scatter plot points appear. <clears throat> Just below that I have r equals positive 1. The correlation coefficient r is always between negative 1 and 1. And notice that nice, perfect, positively sloped line. That's what the points appear to be making. Now if you look at a correlation coefficient r of negative 0 0.94, <clears throat> notice the points go downward, but they don't make a perfect line. And if you look at a correlation coefficient of positive 0 0.86, notice the points form a line that slopes upward. That's called the line of best fit. And but it's not a perfect straight line. The points appear to be forming a straight line, but it's not a perfect exact straight line like the r equals positive 1 picture. And then we have r equals positive 0 0.08. There's not really much going on there. It's just a cluster of points. It may appear that there's a slightly positively sloped line, a best fit that would go through those points. And then you have the correlation coefficient r equals 0. And notice there's no actual linear pattern in our scatter plot points. It's kind of an arc. So here are the requirements to do the linear correlation test we're about to do. So the sample of paired data is a simple random sample of quantitative data, so that means numeric data. Scatter plot confirms the points approximate a straight line pattern, so you need the scatter plot to give you that visual, and then outliers must be removed if they are known to be errors. The effects of any other outliers should be considered as well by calculating R with and without them. Because remember, outliers are data values that are way out of line from the rest of them, and they could really mess up our calculations. <clears throat> so notation is N, number of pairs of sample data. R is the linear correlation coefficient for the sample. And then this P-looking thing called row, row, row 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 your boat except it's r h o it's the linear correlation coefficient for a population so to calculate what is called the linear correlation coefficient which is going to be important for conducting our hypothesis test here in a minute you use the following formula so notice it has r equals you have all of these x times y add up those products, multiply by the sample size n, minus, sum up all the x's, sum up all the y's, then you'll multiply them together. And I mean, there's a lot of work going on there. It's not impossible to do, but I mean, who wants to spend a long time calculating the correlation coefficient by hand? 
So we're going to use technology, but I want you to understand and appreciate what technology is doing for you. That's why I wanted to show you this fun formula. So here's some important information about that linear correlation coefficient r. r is always between negative 1 and 1 if all values of either vari variable are converted to a different scale the value of r will not change so it doesn't matter if we put population in terms of thousands of people or tens of thousands of people or millions of people it would not change the correlation coefficient's value the value of r is not affected by the choice of x and y you could switch the x variable with the y variable and still get the same exact answer r measures the strength of a linear relationship and r is sensitive to outliers but once again technology will take care of all of that for us so i often comment at this point that if i could literally make up a hypothesis testing handout i would list all the different types of hypothesis tests that we would encounter in the statistics class and then i would write out all of the different hypotheses you could deal with well for a test for correlation or a linear test for correlation it's always the same two hypotheses. The null hypothesis is rho equals zero. Remember that's the population correlation coefficient. If the correlation coefficient for the population is equal to zero, there is no linear correlation. That's the English translation. And the alternative is always rho is not equal to zero. Notice you have equal to, not equal to. Equality always goes with the null hypothesis. And if rho is not equal to zero, that means there is a linear correlation. So critical values can be found from the correlation coefficient critical value table using the significance level and n minus two degrees of freedom. We'll talk about that in a moment, where n is the number of pairs of data. And this is a two-tailed test, so there is a positive and negative critical value. So if you test using critical values, if you use the critical value method, if the absolute value of the correlation coefficient r is greater than the critical value that we find using a table, we reject the null hypothesis. And then that means there is linear correlation. If the absolute value of the correlation coefficient is less than or equal to the critical value, which we'll find from a table, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. And then there is not linear correlation. That's the test statistic or correlation coefficient critical value approach. And then we have our p-value alpha comparison approach. The p-value is less than alpha. If it's under that limbo bar, we reject the null hypothesis and assume there is linear correlation. If the p-value is greater than alpha, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis as usual and conclude there is not linear correlation. So to conduct the test for linear correlation, we'll use in the Google Sheets spreadsheet the regression tab. We'll clear out any data that's in column A and column B, and then we either will copy and paste or type the data into columns A and B. Then we'll find the needed information, including our correlation coefficient, test statistic, and the two-tailed p-value in column E. In my first example, the paired shoe length and height data in centimeters from five males is given. Conduct the hypothesis test of the claim that there is a linear correlation. So that's our claim. There is linear correlation between the two variables. Use a 0 0.05 significance level. <clears throat> so they give me the shoe length and they give me the, the height for each of these males. My hypotheses are as follows. The null hypothesis is always rho, remember that's the population correlation coefficient, is equal to zero. And the English translation of that <coughs> is that there is no linear correlation. Next, the alternative hypothesis, remember the alternative is always basically the opposite of the null so it's not equal to zero and that is there is linear correlation so notice equalities with the null hypothesis not equal to is with the alternative hypothesis and our claim is that there is linear correlation next step is to look at the scatter plot and see if there is a general linear pattern 
<clears throat> so in my scatter plot, I have a point for every shoe length and height. So if the shoe length is 29.7 and the corresponding height is 175.3, I go to 29.7 and I plot a point at 175.3. If the shoe length is 29.7 and then the height is 177.8, I go to 29.7 and I put a point at 177.8. So there's basically two points right on top of each other in that area. And then you continue and you plot the other three points. And what I have here drawn is the line of best fit and it's showing that there is kind of a slight upward positive linear trend going on there. So let's go forth and find more information for this hypothesis test for correlation. So now we're going to find R. We're going to find the linear correlation coefficient. <clears throat> we're going to use Google Sheets for that. We will also use Google Sheets to find the test statistic, and we also use Google Sheets to find the p-value. The critical value will be found by using the critical value table that we'll talk about in a moment. So I'm going to go to the Google Sheets spreadsheet document, and you would start off on the one variable stats tab. That's where the default tab is and you need to go to the regression tab. <clears throat> so starting in cell A2 and B2, you'll type the data values for X and the data values for Y. You'll type your shoe lengths, and then you'll type your heights. So I've typed my five pairs of data into the spreadsheet, and notice you have your correlation coefficient R, which is about 0.59, so that's cell E2. You have your <clears throat> test statistic, the two decimal places, was 1.27, that's what T is, and then you have your p-value, there's only one p-value to pick from here, and that's going to be 0 0.2937, that's our p-value, 0 0.2937. <clears throat> so it's about as easy as that. <clears throat> Alright, so our correlation coefficient, as we found, is going to be 0 0.59, our test statistic Test statistic is 1.27. Critical value will come in just a minute. And then our p-value is going to be 0 0.2937. P-values are typically two four decimal places. <clears throat> to find the critical value, you need to know what are your degrees of freedom. Remember, degrees of freedom is just something that's used to help you find the critical value. And it's used in certain distributions, including this one here when you run the hypothesis test. And the degrees of freedom is the number of pairs of data minus 2. I have 5 pairs of data minus 2, which is equal to 3. So we use what is called a critical value table to find the critical value when there are 3 degrees of freedom. So remember, the level of significance typically used for a hypothesis test is 0 0.05 unless they say otherwise. For these tests, you'll always have a 0 0.05 level of significance. You go down to 3 degrees of freedom and look at the critical value. It's 0.878. Remember, there is both a positive and negative critical value. 0.878. So the critical value is positive or negative 0 0.878. If they ask you for the positive critical value, you put 0.878. If they want to know the negative critical value, you put negative 0.878. So now with our conclusion, I must compare the p-value to alpha. Remember, alpha is 0 0.05. That's our significance level. The p-value is clearly greater than alpha, which means we fail to reject. We are not under the limbo bar. Sorry, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis, which is there is no linear correlation. So what that means is that I can't say anything about my claim. There is not evidence to support my claim that there is linear correlation. So there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that there is linear correlation is the actual structure for the conclusion statement for this test. Now perhaps maybe we should have used more data points, but once again this is just an example to show you how the process works. All right, listed below are the number of enrolled students in thousands and number of burglaries for randomly selected large colleges in a recent year. 
Is there sufficient evidence to, con to conclude that there is linear correlation between enrollment and burglaries? So we'll start off with the hypotheses. Same old hypotheses. Anytime you do a test for correlation, rho is equal to zero, which means there is no linear correlation. And then you have rho is not equal to zero, which means there is linear correlation. which is our claim. Then you have your scatter plot. So once again you plot enrollment along the x-axis. I plotted burglaries along the y-axis. Remember enrollments in terms of thousands. So I went to 32, 103. So I had a point at 32, 103. Then you had a point at 31, 103, 53. 86. These can all be represented as ordered pairs, if you'd like to think back to algebra class and plotting points. <laughs> anyway, let's find all the different things we need for this test. As a refresher, here are the hypotheses over on the right-hand side. <clears throat> Remember, we'll use Google Sheets to find the correlation coefficient, the test statistic, and the p-value. We'll use a table to find the critical value. All right, so let's find the correlation coefficient, test statistic, and p-value now. Google Sheets, we are on the regression tab. We clear out any data that's currently in column A and column B, and then we're literally going to input all of those pairs of data. So input your x values, your enrollment values. Make sure you push enter after you type each value. Do not use the down key, otherwise it will not register for you and your calculations will all be off, which is not very fun if you ask me. All right, so I typed everything in and I have a correlation coefficient of 0.56, a test statistic of 1.92, and it looks like a p-value of 0.0914. Those are the things we need. All right, so we found that our correlation coefficient actually has a value of 0.56. We found that, that our test statistic has a value of 1.92. We found out that our p-value is 0.0914. And we'll compare that to alpha in just a minute. To find the critical value, we need to know our degrees of freedom. So our degrees of freedom is the number of pairs of data minus 2. And how many pairs of data do we have? We actually have 10. So our degrees of freedom is going to be 8. So let's look at the table and determine what the critical value is when we have 8 degrees of freedom. So the critical value for 8 degrees of freedom is actually 0 0.632. Remember that's plus or minus 0.632. All right, so the critical value is 0 0.632. Let's compare that p-value to alpha now. Let's compare that p-value to 0 0.05. That's what alpha is. And it looks like the p-value is greater than alpha. So once again, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we failed to reject the null. So guess what? We don't have evidence to support our claim. We can't weed out the null, so we can't say anything about the alternative, which is our claim. So the proper structure is there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that there is linear correlation. Would these results change? Would my correlation coefficient, test statistic, critical value, p-value change if I actually gave the enrollments of 32,000, 31,000 instead of 32 and 31? The answer to that is actually no. And that would be because scaling data does not change or does not affect correlation. 
So it's killing the data would not affect correlation. It would not affect any of the calculations in this test. So that's how to run a test for linear correlation. Thanks for watching.